Yeah, one game away from making history. Stay with us here on ITV for England versus Italy in the final of the Euros live from 6.30. Now the very latest ITV News. It's almost time. Southgate's England are one game, perhaps one goal away from glory. We know now um, we've got to deliver for you, so we'll be doing everything we can. We're at Wembley, where else? It's England v Italy in the Euros final. The long wait is nearly over. They're partying like it's 1966. Fireworks and flares even before the players are on the pitch. The brave may not live forever, but the cautious don't live at all. Branson's letter to his late mum as he flies to the edge of space. I've done some ridiculous things in my lifetime. That was really, really, really ridiculous. England, you've got this. The stars joining the nation, spurring the team on. Go out there and give it your best. We're all behind you. Come on. And I do believe it's coming home. From Wembley. This is ITV News with Nina Hussain. Good evening. Welcome to Wembley, where the mounting excitement assaults the censors. You can almost taste how badly the England fans here want to win, as well as seeing and hearing it. Inside or out, the white shirts way outnumber the Italian ones. The party's been going strong for hours as those lucky enough to have a ticket head towards the stadium. Wembley has seen its fair share of drama over the years, hasn't it? Well, once again, it will be the epicentre of a nation's fixation with football. And with the players on their way here right now, could it be any more exciting? They left their hotel in Hertfordshire in the past half an hour. Their manager, Gareth Southgate, is in no doubt about what is expected in a message to fans here and everywhere, he said, we know we have to deliver. Our sports editor Steve Scott now on the build-up to the biggest of games. The history boys set off. Their intention to write a new chapter in a book that already reads pretty well. If they are in any doubt as to what today means, they will be under no illusion once they reach Wembley. A football match, yes, but much more, so much more. The air around the stadium thick with smoke and expectation. For most, this is brand new territory. They've no memory of England's last tournament win. It exists only as grainy film footage. Simply put, it's the biggest day of everyone here's life. My dad wasn't even alive last time we won something. Do you think it's going to be penalties? Or do you think we're going to win? We're going to win! <laughs> Sam Astley had a ticket for the semi-final but gave it up to donate bone marrow. On hearing of his sacrifice, a sponsor got him in for today. I'm a big football fan, I've always wanted to. So now to have the opportunity to do it on the biggest game in the last 55 years of like our country's history is just absolutely unbelievable. I'm overwhelmed but I'm just obviously grateful that I've been given the opportunity. Gareth Southgate told fans today they can make a big difference tonight. We know now um, we've got to deliver for you, so we'll be doing everything we can. Um, your support and energy has given us a huge lift. One of England's most loyal followers is urging this young squad to take that one final historic step. can't really believe this is happening. Uh, so exciting and just wish you the very best of luck. You bring out the very best of England and we are all behind you, the whole country is behind you. So um, bring it home. It's anyone's guess how many people at this giant party have tickets, but at least they get to say for the rest of their lives, I was there when. The end of that sentence is yet to be decided. Steve Scott, ITV News, Wembley. 
Well, if Wembley is the epicentre of excitement, tremors stretch from Berwick upon Tweed to Land's End. Over half the population of England will be settling down or standing up in front of a television screen, even those at weddings arranged on the usual assumption that England wouldn't make the final. Paul Brand reports on how life has been put on hold. Our father, who art at Wembley, Southgate be thy name, England's prayers may have gone unanswered for 55 years, but at this Sunday service in North London, today began with faith. For football's coming home, amen. What did you pray for today? I pray that they, if they should get more goals than Italy. Whose side do you think God's going to be on tonight? Well, you, you never know, do you? I mean, there's a lot of Christians in, in Italy as well, and they've got the, the Vatican on their side. But we hope and pray that God will be on England's side this evening. It's coming home. For many, football is a religion, often with its own rituals. These fans drove down from Coventry in their lucky limo. Oh, it's a dream. It's a dream, and I'm buzzing. I can't wait. I can't wait. Many haven't waited. The singing's already begun in Trafalgar Square. At a gig nearby, there was an official rendition by the writers. And at this pub in Yorkshire, they've been lining up the drinks since lunchtime with just a few sober words for the squad. And good luck, boys. You just don't you bring it home for everybody. Um, it's something that everybody needs, really, isn't it, at the moment. Some had been preparing for other occasions before their big day ended up being one for all of England. I said to Prash he can use the screen behind um, the band um, to show the football and it means that the band can sing cheesy um, girl pop songs so me and my girls can have a great time. <laughs> the rest of England will be hoping tonight becomes an anniversary the whole nation can celebrate. Paul Brand, ITV News. In Bury, in uh, Greater Manchester, hometown of the England fullback here in Trippier. They can't wait for the match to start. Dan Rivers is there. How is everyone feeling, Dan? Oh, it's getting very exciting uh, here. We're in the pub owned by Kieran Trippier's brother. Uh, a few nerves as well, a lot of beer already being consumed, but uh, people so proud of Kieran, especially uh, with the news looking like he will start uh, the match this evening. Earlier on, I spoke to his cousin, Carl, and asked him what it meant for the town. It's massive for Berry, but obviously with me like, being related to him, it's an even bigger thing, so a bit nervous, a bit anxious, but yeah, it's good for everyone. It's good for the town, so yeah, really good. Less than two hours uh, to go. Everyone very excited. The prediction from his family of the scoreline, 2-1 to England. Dan Rivers, thank you. Over to Daniel Hewitt at the uh, Fan Zone in Trafalgar Square in central London. Uh, Daniel, the atmosphere has been crazy here for quite a few hours now. Less than a couple of hours to go there. What's it like? Loud, Dina, very loud. The last time England won a major international tournament, People jumped in these fountains in Trafalgar Square to celebrate. Little chance of that tonight with the steel ring around this and this uh, official fan zone. But England fans here will be open, hoping for the same outcome, an England victory. Right now, over a 1,000 fans are sat on these benches. Let's hope, let's hope they're not sitting down during the match. They'll be jumping off if, when uh, England score. I have to say, outside this fan zone, London is absolutely crazy right now. We haven't seen it like this for some time. It is an electric atmosphere. On the whole, it is a party atmosphere. Where they're all going to watch the match, I don't know. Let's hope, though, they're watching uh, an England victory. The excitement is building, yes. Oh, Nina, so too are the nerves. Yeah, aren't they, Daniel? Aren't they just if, when? Let's keep everything crossed. Let's not forget, of course, they're gearing up in Italy too. James Mates joins us now from Rome. Nerves or confidence there, James? Yeah, I mean, it's Italy, it's football, and they're always confident with their record. Why wouldn't they be? Uh, I have to say the feeling is very different from London. It's very un-Italian, very organised. The fan zones here, when well, they're slowly filling up, but this is quite a lot of this is COVID restrictions. 
Only three and a half thousand in fan zones in Rome. The health authorities said they couldn't open the Olympic Stadium in Milan, in Palermo. They've said no outdoor viewing of this match. Uh, they're very determined that this doesn't turn into an opportunity uh, for the Delta variant to start ripping through the country again. But don't misinterpret this as a lack of passion uh, on the behalf of the Italian fans. They're some of the most passionate in Europe. Uh, they will be uh, watching in their millions and uh, if Italy win tonight, the explosion here will be every bit as big as you will see in London. James Mates, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, to today's other news, and Sir Richard Branson has fulfilled his dream of going where no billionaire has gone before. He has completed his away day to the edge of space, making space tourism a reality. The experience of a lifetime, he called it. Emma Murphy in New Mexico watched how he did it. He has set many global records. This was Richard Branson's attempt to achieve galactic ones. His walk to the VSS Unity rocket ship, the steps of a man on the cusp of a lifetime's dream, stepping from Earth towards space. The launch at dawn in New Mexico, a moment of history for the teams who've spent years preparing for it. And then it was time. The VSS Eve, the mothership named after Branson's own mother, taking to the sky. Three, two, one, release, release, release. Clean release. From 50 miles above, astronaut 001 viewed the Earth below. Weightless and closer to his aim to make these moments a reality for all those who also dream of space travel. Branson had hoped for this flight since he saw the first spacewalk in 1969. All right, we have three landing gear down and locked. Gravity returned him to Earth, a dream realized for him, for those who made the journey possible, Main and potentially for all those who share that same hope like of space adventurism. Emma Murphy, ITV News, Spaceport, New Mexico. Back here in the countdown to kick off, good luck messages have been pouring in for the England team, as well as royalty we saw earlier. A whole host of celebrities wanted to wish England well. <laughs> You're in the final of the Euros. Go out there and give it your best and do it for England. Come on, England. Wishing you the best of luck. We know you're going to do it because football's coming home again. Come on, England. Come on, England. Come on, England. You can do it. We've been waiting. Three Lions, come on. We're all behind you. Come on, it's coming home. You've got this. Come on, England, bring it home. Bring it home. Let's go. Come on. It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. I just want to wish the England team all the best for the game coming up. And to you, Gareth Southgate, for being such a class act. You've put an amazing group of young men together who are playing their hearts out for you and for the whole country. It's coming home. Good luck. Leave everything out there at Wembley and go on and win it. Come on, England. It's coming, football's coming home. Come on, Gareth. Come on, England team. You've got this. It's coming home. The nation believes you can go all the way, and I'm sure you will leave everything on the pitch. Now, go out there and do the business. You've got my support, and I do believe it's coming home. Let's go. This is England, this is Southgate's England, but they are Italy. What a night we could be in for. No, absolutely. It all depends. Can England take advantage of this home, ad home advantage? Will they be inspired by these fans? Will they be weighed down by uh, history or not? Nothing is really known here. But what we can guarantee is that all the preparation to this time ha has been perfect. And not, and not only are they playing the game of their lives tonight, but I think they're taking part, they're a key part. Uh, of a national event this evening. It, it, it really is important and shows the power of how the power of sport has the ability to unite a nation, and especially at the moment, you know, 
with the 18 months that we've all endured, today is really an example of a load of escapism that everybody's enjoying. I think the country will still be really proud of this team, whether they win or lose tonight, but you absolutely know that there's only one thing that the players want, and that is at the end of the evening to be lifting the trophy. Steve Scott, thank you. Uh, speak to you after the match. We'll be back once it really is all over, one way or the other. Go well, England. The match coverage is coming up in just a few minutes on ITV. Enjoy it if you can.